up, everyone? Welcome back to A Line in the Stars. I'm Jordan, and here we are today with a model that I've been looking forward so much to building for so long. It has been sitting up on my shelf, and it's been staring at me, and I cannot wait to start building this, especially because I don't have much time. <laughs> so we have less than 90 days for Wonderfest. I'm going to be submitting this model for the Amazing Model Contest, and it basically has to be perfect. So let's go ahead and get started. As you guys saw in the announcement video for this one, there are a lot of rules for this model, for the model submissions. We will get into it as we go along, but let's just say it this way. No brush strokes. No like visible gaps where there shouldn't be gaps, okay? Paint needs to look good. If it's gonna be lit, it can't have light bleed, okay? And if it's going to be a sci-fi ship from a TV show then or a movie, then it has to be screen accurate. So, this is our screen accurate Wonderfest Amazing Model build. <laughs> a lot of words to say, but this is going to be a screen accurate build. I'm going to be picking up the Aztec dummy for it here in the coming weeks. Uh, there is going to be some time. We're going to need to get this primer tonight. And then from there, uh, we're going to be getting our, in the next episode, we're going to be getting our uh, chrome or aluminum base or our base coat on. And it's going to take some time to dry. It's likely going to take a while to dry to dry properly before we can put on the uh, the Aztec dummy and do our thing so we start here and we start with getting primed but first thing we need to get our stuff out of the packages and let's go ahead and take a look at the box and so this is a uh, this is what AMT this is a newer model I believe uh, AMT of course is you know owned by Round two, uh, who owns Polar Lights and MPC and just about everyone else. Um, let's see here. Is this some imagery from the Mandalorian? It is a 13 inch long model. It does have uh, Mando and Grogu inside. I imagine that I'm going to need to spend a lot of time. The imagery here, let's go ahead and bring it up. The image right there of Mando and Grogu is pretty damn bad. So we're gonna be doing a much better job of painting that. Uh, we do have clear parts to be the cockpit, authentic detailing. Uh, we are gonna be displaying it in the landed and open position. I would like for everyone to see what's inside. Now, let's go ahead and get this open. I have looked inside a couple times now at this point because I've had it for so damn long. I couldn't not. <laughs> I also needed to kind of get an idea of our colors, but my friends, look at all of this stuff. Oh man. So this looks like the top. Yep, that's the top of the hull. And what we're gonna have to do is identify all of our outer hull pieces tonight. And then get them washed up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna show you guys the primering process because I gotta do that outside. <laughs> We're gonna set this off to the side. Yeah. Um, all of these parts are look like internal parts. And I got an idea for how we're gonna organize all of this. I wanna get everything off the sprues. Uh, and labeled up so I have a uh, container coming out that uh, is multi I can pull parts out so that I can put pieces in and I have little cards that I can write uh, part numbers on so I want to make sure that I get that going I'm not gonna be painting on spurs for this model we're gonna do a right job right from the very beginning yeah definitely part of our hole here and I do like the fact that it's kind of got that silvery coating on it. I see why they would do that, but uh, we are not going to be dealing with that. We're going to be painting this a gloss black. Primary in a gloss black to start, because gloss black works best for getting uh, chromes and silvers on. So, And then here are our engine pods. And our engine covers. Our clear parts. And then our decals, which we won't be using. So... I think the first thing we need to do is identify all of our parts that are going to be our hole pieces. So let's first up, no, let's grab the ones and pull aside the ones that we know are not going to be it. We are definitely going to be using this piece because we're going to need to paint those. Definitely going to be using that piece. These ones are going to stay inside along with the clear parts. 
So it looks like these are outer hull sections right here. So we're going to be grabbing those. I'm going to find out off camera what all of these hull pieces are. Definitely grab this piece out. And I think that's all of our outer hull pieces there. So let's go ahead and get our pieces separated. All right. This is super exciting, guys. I'm like, I've been waiting so long to do this. There's stuff everywhere now on my desk. <laughs> and you can see I had to go to my streaming camera in order to show just this entire box. It's kind of crazy. Okay. Throw the pieces out here. They're kind of interlinked together, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and separate our pieces. I'm not quite sure. Uh, okay. This piece is definitely what we're going to be painting. And like I said, I need to figure out what these all are real fast, and I'll take care of that off camera. These are definitely whole pieces, outer pieces there. Let's grab this one here. And these are pretty solid pieces of plastic. Um... The molding looks good. There's a flash. Of course, there's flash. We're going to get all this sanded up, and I'll take care of all of that off camera. This is likely going to be just a short episode today as we get started. I'm going to be showing you guys basically the parts I'm going to prime. <laughs> prime them, let them dry, <laughs> and then we'll come back and talk about it at the end. So this looks like one of our landing gear pieces. We'll go ahead and prime that one as well. Is there anything else left in this bag? There is not. And finally, I'm going to leave these pieces in there until we're ready to do something with them. I figure it doesn't make sense to bring them out if we don't need to. And we have our engine, basically our cowls. And then the actual engine, like the actual engines themselves. All right, that's pretty cool. So I am going to go ahead and find out what pieces we need to get off camera real fast, and I will be right back. Okay, so a good portion of this is actually going to have to get primed, separated, and yeah, it's going to be a lot. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take, it's going to take several hours, probably a couple of days for me to go ahead and get this all cleaned up and ready to go, primed, and then we will come back basically um, <clears throat> to review everything that we've done. So give me a little while. Uh, from my perspective, from you, for you, it'll be just a moment, but I will be right back. All right, so we're back, and after much, much paint <laughs> and much primering, we are finally ready for the next phase of assembly, which is actually not going to be what you all think it's going to be. But before we get to that point, let's go ahead and talk about what happened. Now, I originally picked up, let me go ahead and bring it up here. I picked up the Vallejo Gloss Black Primer and it sprayed really well. It went on really, really well. Didn't have any complaints, but it's not lacquer. And I was planning on using a lacquer paint to do the effect of the aluminum sort of color on the razor crest. But here's the deal. You really shouldn't put lacquer over the top of acrylic. <laughs> so I had to soak this off, soak this off, and soak all of this off. While that was happening, I went ahead and took care of all of this with our all clad gloss black. And it's the first time that I've used this. Uh, it has made me very much realize that I need to get a proper air booth um, or a paint booth. Boy, this stuff is rough inside. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I shouldn't be spraying this inside. I did vent and I do have a little hose coming out the back, so we're fine. But, oh boy, was this stuff something. But it, the, the effect turned out exactly what I was hoping for. So before we go on to showing you guys these pieces real quick, before we go today, I know it's a pretty short one, but this has been a lot of work. And I would go ahead and say before I show you these pieces, 
If you want to see me do all of the work for this, you're going to have to catch that on the Hobby Time Modeling stream. And I'll go ahead and throw the link for Friday's video down below and then the video on Sunday, which is going to be kind of cool. Now, keep in mind, I'm always fashionably late. Uh, I pop in about two hours into stream on the Friday one and then about a half hour into on the Sunday one. I can't plan my life very well. But on the Sunday one, if you're watching, World of Wayne was there and I was kind of starstruck for a moment. It was kind of crazy. So um, I even taught him something and it was about soaking this. Uh, <laughs> As you guys have seen, I've gotten really good at stepping back and getting my paint off the models and uh, he had never seen using uh, IPA as the way of uh, removing the paint off the models. And so he was like, hey, what's that? I taught World of Wayne something. That's pretty cool. So anyway, before we go on and show you the pieces here real quick, let's go ahead and show you the smaller bits that I have done. And I have done a lot. There's a lot of them. I have two little cases like this. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in sideways into the screen here. But as you can see here, we have um, all of our different smaller pieces. I have uh, their corresponding numbers uh, labeled with them. Um, I need to get a proper organizer. It's been purchased, taken care of, but I need to get a proper one where there's actual separators in between. But I got everything all labeled up and nice. Uh, so we have that one. And then... And then we have that one. And this one's much more full than that one, and I shouldn't have done that. So... I also did forget one little piece here, so I'm going to take care of that before we get moving on to the rest of the model. So we have these two little uh, cases with all the bits. These are all going to be done in the aluminum. And then for the internals, I know I primered this on here, but I uh, was getting impatient and didn't want to wait for the painting sticks that I'd made. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get these off, get them cleaned up, and then I'll go ahead and uh, get them reprimed in those areas before we move on to the paint. But this is all the internals. Uh, this is going to be done. This was basically just done with the, the rattle can uh, gray primer. And uh, yeah, overall it turned out pretty good. Really appreciate how this stuff works. Uh, I got both sides, but this is basically all the internal bits uh, for the uh, Razor Crest. And then we have our top. Now, I figured out how to lay this down, the all clad, the black gloss, as I was going along. So this one, we got a little bit of dulling up here. I'm going to try to come back along the top and get another nice sheen one more time. Um, I believe we can, but if we try to put too many layers on, I know that you can kind of get this sort of dulling effect. So, I mean, overall, once again, it's going to be, you know, this is just the base, but I want to try to get it as shiny as possible. But if we have some dulling, it's going to work for the weathering effect. But this is one of the pieces that we had to soak. And once again, make sure to check out the streams. Like, they're really entertaining. Um, and I wind up like cleaning all these pieces up and you'll see how easy it is to clean up uh, parts with IPA. So here's our internals. Uh, I'm going to, I don't think we're going to be doing anything in here. So I did not paint it, did not prime it or anything like that. We have our main hull piece. This one also as well. Like I said, as I was going along, I was learning how to apply this and get it nice and shiny. There are parts that are nice and shiny, like right here, for instance, um, and this is where I was really starting to figure it out, you know, and then along here I, I figured out how to get the part shiny with the black gloss But overall, I'm pretty happy with the effect that we got out of that We have all of our little engine bits um, I'm not gonna pick up and show into all of them individually, but I'll go ahead and show the highlights of ones that turned out really really good So we have this here And then Let's go ahead and grab one of the cowls, and I think I'm going to grab the best one. And this is the very last piece, and when I say I got good at doing this, I got good at doing this at the very end. And this, my friends, is a primer. <laughs> the All Clad just sprayed so nicely, did not need to thin it, didn't need to do anything with it. And this just turned out so incredibly good. I'm really, really proud of the work. That was done there nice and shiny hopefully it's coming through on the camera there i'm going to kind of give it a couple of different angles just in case but yeah it turned out really really good i'm going to try to get this on the rest of the pieces but to be honest with you this has taken a couple of days this has taken like probably mm, five to six hours on stream 
to get done. So including some work that was done that I wound up just cleaning off. And so there's all of our pieces. We have everything all separated off of our sprues. We have everything ready to go. What's going to happen next, however, is not getting our aluminum paint job on, which is what you guys would think I was going to be doing. And that's not the case. And two reasons for that. One, I am waiting for pink to arrive from Georgia. So coast to coast on it usually takes about a week through uh, snail mail. So uh, it's going to be a little bit before I can start working on this. And I don't have the luxury of time of waiting. Two, I am also waiting for uh, the Aztec dummy to arrive for this one. Um, I also don't have the luxury of waiting for that, which is also coming coast to coast, which I don't have the luxury of waiting. Uh, it's going to take about a week. And then three, our lighting kit is going to be arriving sometime at the end of this month. So I have to really think about how my build is going to be going. And that lighting kit, kit I'm just not sure. Like, I'm going to try to get the uh, seller on eBay who's out of town right now. As soon as he gets back, I'm going to see if we can like do a priority shipping for free or something like that. But that's also going to arrive as well. So I don't have the luxury of waiting for all those parts to really get on with the main build. And so what we're going to be doing is getting all of our internals built and actually kind of following some of our instructions for a little bit later on. And so I really want to focus on the quality of the internals. And uh, the one big difference between... And uh, Donnie, uh, I'll go ahead and toss your name up here again. Donnie was the one who pointed out the difference between the two models, really, is that the AMT kit, which is what this one is, does not have a very detailed interior where the outside is a little more detailed. The Ravel kit is much more internally detailed, and I'm curious about looking in to see if I can find the internal parts for that and doing a hybrid model, something I'm thinking about. So... Regardless, what we're going to be doing next is starting to work on the internal parts of the model. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and see about doing some painting um, and, you know, getting our cockpit put together up here, for instance, and like getting our decals, if we're going to be using them, getting them on properly, getting, you know, to put them on properly, you know, you got to go through several steps. You got to gloss it and then you need to, you know, you got to paint it and then you got to gloss it. Then you got to put the decal on and then you got to dull it, you know, so... We, there's a lot of work to do, and while I'm waiting for all of the stuff for the outside, we're going to be working on the internals. So that's going to be what's coming up next. I do encourage you guys all to check out the Hobby Time Modeler stream, as always. Um, I'm making sure to uh, throw the link down to uh, the channel every single time we're streaming. We have a very special series coming up here soon, one that we all cannot wait to share with you guys. It is a very, very special series. One that uh, I think we're going to probably be the only ones in the world doing it. So it's kind of cool. More to come on that front. So I think that's what I got for you today. This is our very first episode of the Razor Crest and our amazing Wonderfest model build. And uh, I am pretty pleased with how this turned out. But I have taken my time, my friends. I have not rushed anything here outside of the acrylic. And it was a lesson in patience, but once again, I need to get moving on this, and I was willing to pivot if we needed to. But I've taken my time with this lacquer paint job, and I'm going to go ahead and come back over it one more time and see what I can do about bringing up more of that shine. Because there are certain parts, like right through here, where it just really laid down really nice. I'm not going to take this down. I'm not going to do that. That's crazy talk at this point. I need to keep moving on. So, And that's what I got for you today, and I just want to say thank you. I know y'all had a million things to do today. Said he spent a couple minutes with me watching me build a model, which I think is pretty damn cool. If you guys have any questions, comments, tips, tricks, please leave them down below. If you'd like to support the channel, please like and subscribe. Oh, and my friends, until we see each other again, I hope you all have a wonderful day in this beautiful world, wherever you happen to be. And just remember that this is the way. <laughs>